Good morning. We're going to um, start with our geo session uh, first, and this is a continuation of a um, session, a discussion on Bill 3 19 Administration, Executive Branch, Non Married Positions. Um, today, we're going to um, finish up by focusing on these two uh, pending issues. Uh, one was the fiscal impact of the bill, and then the day to day operations of the proposed Chief Labor. Relations Officer. I see Ms. Kasiri coming forward, Deputy Chief Administrative Officer. Um, and um, first, let me then turn to Ms. Kasiri, and we'll engage in a dialogue to see where we are with those two outstanding issues. Ms. Kasiri. Um, good morning. Uh, we good morning. did provide the follow-up items. One was um, brief overview of every single savings. Um, or positions, where the funding is coming from as far as the source of funds. And second item was um, input from county executive regarding reporting um, of reporting authority of the chief labor relations officer, which again, we, we cl clarify that, that during labor negotiations is going to be directly dealing with county executive as far as the, on a day-to-day on -day basis, on administrative matters, it's going to work with the CAO and all the departments to implement the mission of the office. And by the way, the office is more than one person. The staff of labor relations will be moving under this position. Okay, can you, um, for the listening audience that doesn't have the packet, and obviously we all been very busy and we got the packet, <laughs> Wait, can you go over the savings, please? Definitely savings money. Um, after we actually outline and put the actual salaries, the salaries and benefits are the positions that will be abolished. The total savings is a total of $775,927. That's the total savings. And the number of positions being abolished here are five positions. Okay. Uh, let's see, I have uh, Council Member Friedson. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I, I read the packet, saw the response. I appreciate you uh, going back and understand the, uh, the lack of certainty with what the money is going to look like in terms of the actual cost based on separation agreements that still need to happen. I my impression is that that's not going to be able to happen before we make uh, or being asked to make uh, this decision on, 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 on the moves. I do appreciate the county executive's prerogative to be able to set up and make changes to the government. So my, my uh, I guess, ask at this point would be once we do have that information, if you could report back to us so we could get uh, the final real number of what the actual savings will be n netted out with the total cost of separation agreements, severance packages, et cetera, for the uh, positions that are being eliminated. I think that, you know, in the interest of our financial oversight um, would be helpful. But, I, you know, I'm okay with not having it beforehand, understanding that once this is approved, those conversations and those agreements are going to have to be agreed upon, and there may be situations where uh, some of those folks move from one position to another and maybe other situations where uh, they decide to leave county service and are given some type of separation as a result of that. Uh, basically, this is, there's a process to follow. Uh, you're absolutely right. By no means government is asking anyone, forcing anyone to retire. There are other positions in the government that these individuals, if they want to, we can be going to start the RIF process and they can, they could be placed in other position, other funded positions in county government. So therefore, as far as the savings, we're going to realize the saving no matter if it's a retirement or placing them in different positions. Okay. There, seem, there seem to be some misunderstandings. So regardless of what happens, they're going to either be placed in different funded positions or retire. In either case, government is going to realize those savings. Respectfully, I don't think there's any misunderstanding. I think what you're saying is, here's the amount of savings, assuming that zero dollars is going to be expensed on separation agreements. 
because you don't know what those costs are going to be, you're assuming them at zero. I think we all recognize that the number is most likely not going to be zero, that, that the positions being eliminated, there's at least a reasonable chance that one or some of those folks are going to leave county service, in which case there will be a net cost to us, to the taxpayers, to the county. And all I'm asking for is once this process is completed, once we make the, you know, the, the budget process is done, we know exactly what the numbers are in terms of what the savings is. We know how much was paid out in terms of separation agreements. That number will be less than the 775000 or 750000 I don't know what that number will be, but I think in the interest of transparency and accountability, it would just be helpful to know you know, and have that accurate yes. number. I, you know, like I said, I appreciate you going back. I appreciate the, the reality of you don't know what the answer is. So right now it's assumed to be zero. Uh, I think we all recognize that it's probably not going to end up being zero. And so I just think it would be helpful for, for us as, uh, as a council just to get that, that information. That's, that's all I'm asking. I don't think it's a, a, a big ask. So thank you. Thank you. Council Vice President Katz. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I think we're, and, and to, uh, to Councilmember Friedson's point, I think where the confusion or the differences could be is for the first, when, when this actually takes place, there is going to be severance packages. There's going to be, if somebody is either moved or, or, has, a, uh, or has a severance package that they, won't, that they would leave county services. After that, the next year's budget, everything is a savings because those those positions will no longer be in the budget so that's i think that's the biggest the biggest difference here just i i, I agree uh, as far as any retirement sa saving retirement incentives it's not a severance package it's a retirement incentives it, compared with 775000 it's going to be minimal yes right. and, yes and, and, and Yes. And what it's called or whatever. I mean, the dollars are dollars to me. I mean, right. you know, we can call, you know, yes. the, that fellow named Shakespeare talked about a rose. So, but, but uh, you know, it, but the bottom line on this is for this one right now, for the people in those positions that w might be leaving or changing, there is going to be some, some monies exchanged from the county to them. And, and after that, there is not going to be that budgeted area. So, yeah, thanks. Okay, can we um, then now... Uh, talk about the CLRO on page three, council staff uh, indicates that under section 211 of the county charter, the chief administrative officer supervises all department's offices and agencies of the executive branch. The executive sent an email in circle 15 that stated that the executive's intent is to work directly with the CLRO during labor negotiations, but for the day-to-day -day operations of, on labor matters, the CLRO will work with the CAO and the departments. And then council staff states that if it's critical that this person report directly to the executive year-round, then the executive can identify one of his special assistants as a CLRO in addition to their other duties instead of adding a CLRO as a non-married position in the code. Um, and it says no changes to Bill 3-19 are required to implement the executive's intent as expressed in the attached email. Um, so can we have a conversation about that? Um, I, I, I think... It seems like the recommendation is to, to, in lieu of having a chief labor relations officer, to assign it to one of the special assistants. I believe that's what. No, there's no specific recommendation in the packet. We were noting um, that the only direct reports to the county executive under the charter are the special assistants and the CAO. So um, to the extent that it's important that a full-time um, person be devoted to these um, to, to this these duties it would um, report to the CAO under the charter but the executive has expressed his intent that he will work directly with the CLR during CLRO during the negotiations so assuming that that is um, amenable then no we were just saying that you don't have to amend the bill in order to effectuate that intent um, Mr. Wren, do you have any comments regarding this? The idea was that everybody was going to talk to each other and come back with some uh, kind of... The, the unions still maintain the position that, and, and just for back up, background, we three union presidents met with the uh, executive yesterday to discuss this issue, and we th still believe that 
this particular position in this government, given the nature and significance of its function, i.e., cultivating and maintaining 80% of the taxpayers' investment, um, needs to be under direct guidance supervision of the executive. Um, we went through 12 years of an administration that did not put uh, any uh, significant priority on labor relations, and this government suffered for that, as did the taxpayers because services have diminished. And if anybody doesn't want to believe that, spend a day in the field with me and talk to my workers. Um, what did the executive indicate to you? Uh, so, you know, I, I understand the charter, but I take different, I interpret things differently. Supervision is a pretty broad term, and it means different things regarding different subject matters. Um, okay, they report to the CAO, but what does that mean? Well, the CAO determined the tone and um, uh, nature of, of labor relations, because if that's allowed to happen, we're going to have the same problem we've been struggling with. If the executive does what he says he's going to do, um, make that determination, uh, I guess at this point in time, given the charter, we'll have to try to make that work. But I'm going to publicly say here today, if it doesn't work, we're going to be back here asking well, for your intervention. <laughs> we're not shocked. <laughs> <laughs> we're not, we are not going to continue the chaos that we've been subjected so, to. Um, well, so that's what I was going to say. I mean, at the end of the day, right, this is the executive's administration, you know, and, and we are trying to facilitate what he has indicated are his priorities and is his change of tone and is the different direction. Um, of course, if for some reason, you know, there are some issues, et cetera, I mean, we're happy to be facilitators in that, in that way. But, you know, but at the end of the day, again, I think that he, and I think he has expressed that he wants to do things very differently. And so, you know, um, we've all been very uh, open to um, to support and facilitate uh, the executive's transition and administration because if he succeeds, Montgomery County succeeds. And this particular issue re regarding labor relations is very, very important, as you noted, uh, given where our resources um, go and given the expectation of our uh, constituents. So, um, so we will definitely be, you know, monitoring and, and tracking and um, and seeing how this this different structure. Um, works. I do know, Count, do you have a? I, I'm, you okay. summarized it well. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you very much. But I really do appreciate the, the opportunity to dialogue as well. Um, to me, I think this is part of uh, doing things differently. I think in the past there was just a lot of just siloed conversations, even when it came to the council. Uh, you know, the conversations tend to kind of happen in different ways, and that really led to some very unfortunate miscommunications that. Um, you know, that resulted in a lot of uh, upset people. And so we don't want to do that. We want to be as transparent and as, a, as collaborative as possible. Um, so, so that is what we will try to do. Council Vice President. Yeah, and, and just to add to that, I, and I appreciate your position. I do. I, I think that, that the county executive has said to us directly, and I'm, I'm assuming he said it yesterday to, to you all as well, that, you know, give him a chance to figure out what, what does and what doesn't work. And, and there's going to be things that do and don't. And so I think at the, at the end of the day, if something isn't working out, I know you're not going to be shy and neither are you. And, and so that we'll, we'll figure out what needs to be a better thing. But if you, in, in my concern, Concern is if the county executive or any any person uh, says that that they would like to try to do something and it looks like it could work, we should give them that that flexibility. And if it doesn't work out, then you take some of that flexibility away. So anyhow, that's where I am. Councilmember Friesen. Yeah, sorry. I, I think the uh, at the last meeting I mentioned you had you had talked with your significant experience in a lot of administrations on labor relations about. You know when it's worked and when it hasn't worked, and I think I was the one who, you know, kind of raised the question of was it a special assistant before? Was that their only role? Was that part of their uh, portfolio? And then staff, you know, just to kind of summarize how we got here, staff reflected the fact that the the charter is what is dictating, you know, how it can report directly to the county executive. In the previous model of having a special assistant, that's what it 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 currently 
allows. But I kind of share the views of my colleagues, appreciate the, the thoughts that have been uh, raised. Uh, you know, I think tone starts at the top uh, in any uh, administration, in any organization. And I know that you'll be working hard to make sure that the right tone uh, is set. And I think we'll be mm -hmm. carefully watching and uh, here to be productive partners in the appropriate time. Okay, so I think with those two clarifications, um, without objection, we will recommend to the entire council um, the bill as introduced. Thank um, you so much. On behalf of the three unions, I'd like to thank the three of you for your interest in making this a priority. Thank you. All right. Ms. Navarro? Yes. I did want to clarify that you're recommending a bill with an amendment. Okay, I'll start to remember that. Right. What was the amendment again? Can you say uh, The amendment was there's an employee that is in a position yeah. that is slated to become non-merit, and so he's in his probationary period, and so we're going to ensure that um, he That's retains his like merit status. Right. Okay. Do we need to include in this the request for a report, or can we do that separately? to report back on the cost savings since that wasn't really even part of it the It will be reflected in the council packet. Okay, that's great. Thank you. All right, great. So 3-0, uh, bill is amended. Thank you so much. Um, and so I know at 10.30 um, is when we have the scheduled audit. Um, so we will pause and uh, reconvene at 10.30. <laughs>